I hope you've enjoyed this brief video series on the TI-99 4A. Unfortunately, I have some other projects that are waiting on me that I'd like to get started on. So I'm going to leave you with this last installment, at least for now. I'll probably come back to it at a later time. But this one's going to be interesting. We're going to cover a lot of different topics, uh, including how to replace this TI monitor with a more modern alternative. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of options. Um, by far, not the only options that are available. But there's a few things with this monitor. Uh, I think it's in need of a cap kit, and there's a little bit of fading in here. The colors are reasonable. Uh, they look pretty good. Um, the uh, volume control here is shortened out. Sometimes you can hear it crackle and pop. Um, so, yeah, it, it needs an upgrade. So we're going to replace this with an LCD screen and uh, a CGA or RCA adapter uh, that will allow it to output to VGA as well as uh, an HDMI output in case I want to hook it up to a TV. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're also going to take a look at the uh, FlashROM 99, which is an awesome way of getting rid of cartridges. What I want to do is consolidate this modernized version of the TI into a single box that includes a lot of cartridges, um, the screen, the nano, PEB, everything all in one tub so I don't have to bring down five, six tubs full of uh, very large bulky items. Uh, so anytime I want to revisit the TI or create another video I'll be able to come back to this one single tub, pull it out, set it up and be good to go. So anyway, that's a couple of the goals uh, for this video. Um, additionally, I want to take a brief look at some of the emulation options available to you. Um, last year, my son and I refurbished uh, uh, an arcade cabinet. You can go back and take a look at my prior video on that. Uh, but basically, we took this arcade cabinet that we found on the side of the road, and we well, it was pretty much gutted when we got it. Um, but we cleaned it up, fixed it up, turned it into a Raspberry Pi retrocade and it's pretty awesome so anyway i hope you enjoy this and let's get started okay the first first item that we want to look at is this video converter uh, it's video to vga pick this up on amazon i'll put a link in the description below in case you'd like to do the same uh basic basically if you look at the underside here you have video in and you have VGA out. Uh, that's a nice little feature. One thing that's missing here, however, is an audio output. Um, it's great for converting your uh, video input out to VGA, but as far as being able to listen to any sound from the TI, you'll need a small set of uh, external speakers or a little mono speaker. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the video converter video to VGA. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at something that I neglected to look at in my prior video. If you look at the back of the TI-99 4A, you have this video port. In my first video, I skipped over this intentionally because I was going to come back to it in a future video to discuss it. Had a YouTuber ask me, hey, what about the video port? And he's right, I missed it intentionally. Uh, and, and didn't go into detail about this particular port. So we're going to do that now. There were two ways to connect up uh, video to the TI-99-4A uh, back in the 80s. Uh, one of them was this connector, which goes uh, to the video port on the back of the TI. Let's get the key correct here. Alright, got that plugged in. And then it goes from there to this RCA cable. Uh, so I can take the video input, which happens to be this red output, red cable, and I can plug it into the video converter. And then this cable, um, I have a small adapter on there, a little RCA to, uh, I think it's 3.55 millimeter output for uh, speakers. So I just take that and it converts that signal and I can plug in you know any kind of speakers that I want pretty much so yeah 
that's how you do it. You hook it up here, then you hook your VGA to your monitor. Um, this also has a small USB cable. Uh, you can use this to power this. So I presume it's a 5 volt input, which is typical of USB ports. Um, you plug this into a power source, a USB jack, or um, you know whatever kind of adapter you have. Plug that in, and you can feed the video signal or convert the video signal from RCA to VGA. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect up the VGA monitor. Okay, so now we have the VGA monitor hooked up. Uh, it's kind of funny, I found this on the side of the road. And there's a good reason why someone got rid of it, because it's wobbly. Uh, the stand needs some adjusting, so I may do that later on after this video. Uh, but let's see, let's see what it looks like. Voila! We have a beautiful video signal. Now again, I don't have a speaker hooked up right now, so there's no audio. But yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? It's a nice display. I'm glad someone got rid of this. Makes a perfect little TI-994A monitor. Let's see what it looks like with the Mega Demo. That's an impressive monitor. I like it. I'll use it. <laughs> That's great. Okay, now to move along. Another adapter you might be interested in is this AV to HDMI. Basically you take your video signal and plug it into this yellow port here. And then you have a left and right audio signal. Of course with the TI we only have one so you plug one into either of those and it outputs to HDMI which is nice so you can plug in your HDMI cable hook it up to a, a modern TV set I'll put a link to this item in case you're interested in using it it did work very well I have tested it um, and like the uh, uh, video to VGA adapter this also has a small USB cable so you'll need a uh, USB to power it so you plug that in your USB port and HDMI in here, your video in here, your audio in here, and you're good to go. So that's another option for you. All right, guys, we're at the arcade machine, and uh, basically this is the cabinet that my son and I uh, refurbished and rebuilt last year. Um, here we have RetroPie. Uh, I forget which version. Four point. I think um, and it's running the TI-99 sim so I'm going to go in here and press A on the TI-99 4A and then from here you can pick whatever cartridges that you want to play so let's say you want to play what's something we haven't looked at um, let's say Burger Time I'm not very good at this game so this will be short All right, so when it opens up, you have the original uh, TI screen. And I'm going to go ahead and move this mouse out of the way. Uh, press 2 for burger time. Any key to begin. For this, you will need the keyboard, not to play the game, but to get into the simulator. Uh, controls here. Let me put a view of the control panel here. 
Alright, so let's exit this game. Now we're back at the list. We can pick a different one. Uh, let's bring up Donkey Kong. Oh, what happened? Let's go to Donkey Kong. All right, so we're gonna press two for Donkey Kong. Move the mouse out of the way. Press enter. So now we've got Mario running from barrels and Donkey Kong. And I got out already. Anyway, that's a close look at the, uh, the TI-99-4A SIM for the RetroPie, or actually for any Raspberry Pi. I think you can install it uh, separately from RetroPie, but I just prefer to put it in here. Um, and it's available here along with a bunch of other ports for MAME, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Daphne for the... Um, playing some of those laser disc games like Dragon's Lair, Atari 7800, 2600. If you haven't used RetroPie before, you need to take a look at that too. It's pretty cool. So we're back to the TI-99-4A and let's take a quick look at what this arcade actually looks like from the full view. Again, if you want to take a look at how we restored it and put it together, go back and see our other videos. Um, this cabinet was one that we built from scratch. It's actually a bar top, and later on we decided to build a base for it. We have a separate video on those two, uh, at, at least on the base portion of it. I don't think I recorded anything on building the, uh, the bar top. So... That's pretty cool. You can play Donkey Kong and a host of other games. Over there in the far corner on the right, this one was the first uh, arcade game that we purchased. Uh, it was a Christmas gift many years ago. And then we have an original 1981 Defender. Um, I'm doing some restore work on that. Still need to do a, little th a few little things on it, but it's in pretty good shape. Plays well. If you have amassed a large collection of cartridges, games, and stuff like this, well, it takes up a lot of space, and it's pretty inconvenient to go digging through a box of cartridges trying to find what you're looking for. So, is there a better option for this? I think the answer is yes. Let's take a look. Instead of having all those cartridges laying around, Here's another option you might want to consider. It's the Flash ROM 99. Basically what you do is you copy all your .bin files onto a SD card. In this case I just have a small 2 gig SD card. I think the maximum number of files you can put in the uh, root directory is like 176 or something along those lines. So basically you can have 170 some odd cartridges right there available to you very easily. Uh, this is a reset button. What it does after you load a cartridge, you can hit this button and it'll bring you back to the uh, Flash ROM 99 menu where you can select a different cartridge. Something you might want to consider? Let's take a quick look at it. Okay, so now I'm going to go into Flash ROM 99, number 2. And here we have a bunch of different programs and games that you can load up and play. You can press the comma or the period to go back or forward within the menu until you get to the application that you want to run. 
So in this case, we'll pick E for Donkey Kong. And there we have it. There's Donkey Kong. And if I press function F uh, quit, notice it goes back to Donkey Kong in the list. If I want to change or swap back, I can press the little button on the top of the flash rod. So let's do that. If I want to go back to the uh, flash rod 99 menu, all I have to do is press this button and you'll see this LED come on. When it goes off, that means that you're able to go back to the menu again. I do want to mention a limitation on the flash rod 99. Uh, there are some cartridges that will not play such as uh, TI Extended Basic, you can't put that on there. I believe it's any programs that utilize GROM, uh, so if that's the case for your particular needs, then the Flash ROM 99 may not be an ideal situation. So for me, right now I have to keep a copy of uh, Extended Basic handy, but I just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out. Well, thank you for watching this video series on the TI-99 4A. I had a wonderful time filming it and revisiting things that I have not seen in many, many years. So, I'll end this video with a picture here of where we began to where we are now. As you can see, the TI went through several upgrades throughout this series. Uh, so if I want to create another video in the future, I don't have to bring down 40 tubs of stuff to do so. And I can keep the original equipment up in the attic safely stored for another day. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video series. And perhaps I'll be creating some additional videos in the future. Thanks again. Thank you.